Hello everyone, my name is Swanee, and thanks for stopping by and checking out my channel. Now, Helldivers 2 just released the Democratic Detonation War Bond, and with it came a bunch of brand new goodies. We got some outfits, we got some victory poses, and of course, we got a bunch of brand new weapons. And for today's video, I'm going to give a small little breakdown and give you my thoughts and opinions and first impressions of each of these weapons. This includes the B-14 Adjudicator, the R-36 Eruptor, the G-31 Grenade Pistol, Pistol, the CB9 Exploding Crossbow, and the G123 Thermite Grenade. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So first up, I want to talk about the B14 Adjudicator. Now this is the first new weapon that you'll be able to unlock in the latest Warbond, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it, this was my least favorite out of all of the new weapons. But before I get into why this is my least favorite, let's go over the weapon stats. So first up, this is listed as a Marksman Rifle, which I immediately found to be a bit confusing, because the damage output is a measly 80, which is a lot lower when compared to the other two Marksman Rifles. It has a ammo capacity of 25 rounds per magazine, and it has a total of of six magazines. It has a recoil of 50 and a fire rate of 550. And then for the weapon traits, it claims that it has medium armor penetrating. Now getting into the weapon's breakdown, for attachments it has no flashlight, which always kind of sucks to see. I always like when there's a flashlight option, especially for those dark maps. For zoom levels, it has three different zoom levels at 25 meters, 50 meters, and 100 meters, which I found to be very odd considering this is a marksman rifle. The scope, I am not a fan of the scope of this weapon, especially at the 100 meters. It feels like with this being a marksman rifle, you should be able to shoot a lot further than 100 meters. But then for the fire rate it has two options which are semi-auto and full auto. Now I gotta say something immediately fell off when I was using this weapon. When I was using it it felt a lot like an assault rifle instead of a marksman rifle except it isn't as good as the other assault rifles and when compared directly to the other marksman rifles it doesn't feel nearly as good as them either which puts this weapon in a weird spot. You can immediately notice just how little damage the adjudicator does when compared to the diligence and the diligence counter sniper. With those weapons you can one shot kill most of the smaller enemy types and you can knock back some of those enemies with some stagger but with the adjudicator it was taking at least two to sometimes three shots to kill some of the smaller bugs and robots and I was noticing that the stagger was pretty much non-existent. When I was shooting the medium tier enemy types like the brood commanders or the bile spewers or the rocket devastators I wasn't able to stagger them at all and while I'm using the adjudicator if there's a rocket devastator and he's bracing himself to launch his rockets at me and I can't stagger him to knock him out of his animation, that's a pretty big downside when compared to some of the other weapons that have medium armor penetration. Now it can one shot kill some of these smaller tier robots if you get a headshot, but I found that that's kind of hard to do. When I was testing out this weapon, I found that a lot of my shots felt very inaccurate, especially at the mid to long range. So I went and tested out the recoil and I found that the recoil is all over the place. It's a little bit more manageable when you're in first person, but in third person, this weapon just sprays everywhere. And I was noticing that a lot of my shots weren't lining up with the scope sometimes. So I don't know if there's just a glitch going on where the weapons just aren't lining up accurately with the scope, but I was missing a lot of my shots. And at first I just thought it was because I was using my controller. So then I switched over to keyboard and mouse and I was still missing a lot of my shots. So something is definitely up with the scope of this weapon and it doesn't feel very accurate. So to summarize my first impressions of this weapon, it just doesn't feel like it has a place. It doesn't feel as good as the assault rifles and it doesn't feel as good as the marksman rifles. I felt like the devs didn't really know where to put this weapon when they were designing it and maybe I'm missing something but loading it up and playing with this weapon for a couple of different hours I wasn't immediately blown away by it especially compared to some of the other weapons that came out in this war bond. Some of the other ones which I'm about to get into you just point shoot boom the enemies die immediately and it's great and this weapon just feels very underpowered. I would honestly probably pair it with some sort of stratagem that does explode explosive damage like a rocket launcher or grenade launcher because you're definitely going to need it when it comes to taking on some of those bigger enemy types. So overall with the B14 Adjudicator, I'm personally a little bit disappointed with this weapon and I can already predict it now that I feel like a lot of the community's probably going to be complaining about this weapon too. 
Okay, so moving on, let's talk about the R36 Eruptor. Now this weapon is miles better than the previous one. Now it's listed in the explosive category, and this is probably the closest that you're going to get to a primary sniper rifle. This gun is so good that I'm honestly surprised that it's a primary weapon, and it's not some support stratagem that you have to call in. It feels very comparable to the anti-material rifle, but with more explosions. I was honestly kind of blown away with just how good this weapon is. So let's go over the weapon stats. For weapon damage, it has an insane 380, but then to compensate for the crazy damage, they only give you five rounds before you have to reload. But fortunately, you can carry up to 12 magazines when you're using this weapon, which gives you a total of 60 powerful shots before you have to go looking for ammo. It has a recoil of 75, which is pretty manageable, and then it has a very slow fire rate of 25. Now, because of the slow fire rate, you're going to have a two second delay between each of your shots, because it's a bolt action rifle. This is not a weapon that you want to have up close and personal to enemies due to that slow firing rate and because of the crazy explosion damage. If you're not careful, the explosion damage from this weapon can kill you. So if an enemy gets right up in your face and you try to panic fire, you are going to end up accidentally killing yourself with that explosive damage. Now, unfortunately, yet again, this weapon has no flashlight, but that's kind of understandable given what type of weapon this is. It has three zoom levels at 50 meters, 100 meters, and 2 200 meters and from my testing I've noticed that this weapon has very little bullet drop off like this thing can go pretty far I was able to hit enemies at a distance of over 200 meters pretty accurately with very little bullet drop off But do keep in mind when you're trying to hit enemies at a distance The bullet travel time is a bit slower because these are big powerful explosive rounds They are going to take a little bit longer to get to the target So if you're trying to hit a target on the move at a distance keep that bullet travel time in mind another plus side to this weapon is that it can blow up things in the environment like fences and the cargo containers. So if you stumble across one of these loot containers and you want to save yourself a grenade, you can just use this primary weapon to easily blow up the containers. And a lot of primary weapons don't have this ability, so that's definitely a huge plus. And it has medium armor penetrating and very good stagger, so if you're going up against those medium tier enemy types like the brood commanders or the rocket berserkers or anything that you need to stagger to buy yourself a couple seconds of time, this weapon is a great choice and honestly this is probably going to be my go-to weapon for both the automatons and the terminids the explosion damage on this weapon is absolutely nuts when i was going up against the terminids and there was just huge clusters of the smaller enemies one shot from this gun will easily kill like five plus smaller bugs in one shot same goes for the robots i was playing an eradicate mission where a lot of the bots were grouping up together and just one shot was taking them all out with ease and this weapon can also one shot kill any of the bile spewers that shoot puke at you i can't emphasize enough just how great this weapon is against the bugs it is so good i wasn't having too much success with the bile titans or the chargers or the hulks but honestly that's what these stratagems are for anyway those are meant for those bigger enemy types you're not supposed to use your primary weapon to take them out and i recommend bringing a support stratagem like the stalwart to help deal with those close encounters because like i said earlier if you get rushed you are going to end up blowing yourself up so it's probably a good idea to have your secondary weapon as something with a high rate of fire like the machine gun pistol. Or what I like to personally do is call in the stalwart machine gun and use that as my primary weapon for up close and personal stuff. And then I switch back to the R36 Eruptor for anything that's mid to far range. And honestly, I don't really have any complaints. The only nitpick I could maybe have is that it only has five shots, but the damage output is so powerful that I can excuse the five shots. I honestly think this is an S tier weapon. I'm in love with this with my first impressions. I was blown away by it. Like I said, I think this should be a support weapon that you call in with a stratagem. I think it's that good. I give this weapon like a 10 out of 10. I, I absolutely love this weapon and it's honestly probably one of my new favorite weapons in all of Helldivers 2. So next up, I want to go over the GP31 Grenade Pistol. And I don't think I'm going to have any controversial take with this weapon, because, I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's just a grenade pistol. You get one shot with it, although currently it's glitched where sometimes you spawn in and you'll have two shots loaded in it, and it comes with eight shots in total before you have to go looking for more ammo. Now, this is basically just a miniature version of the support grenade launcher that you can call in as a stratagem, except you only get one shot at a time and you can't rapid fire it. 
Now this is a great utility weapon. This isn't the weapon that you switch to to just panic fire and blow everything up. That's not going to work. Especially if an enemy gets super close up into your face, the grenades are just going to bounce right off of their armor and it's not going to do anything. And if you find yourself in that sweet spot, the explosion damage can hurt you and kill you. So you definitely don't want to pull this out and panic fire grenades anyway because, you know, you're obviously you're going to kill yourself. So you're going to want to bring the GP31 grenade pistol with you if you want some additional help clearing out some of the objectives. So for example, the grenade pistol is great at blowing up those shipping containers so you can get that sweet loot. It's great at blowing up fences if you need to destroy a fence for whatever reason. And then obviously it's great at doing explosive damage so if you see a small group of enemies clustered up together, you can kill them all at once. And then this weapon really shines when it comes to blowing up bug holes or robot factories. Maybe you're out of grenades and you have no other option to blow up these robot factories. That's a problem I personally always run into. I seem to never have grenades on my person. So having the GP31 grenade pistol on you, you can just swap to your secondary, shoot a quick grenade down the hole, and congratulations, you just blew yourself up a robot factory. And it's also really good when it comes to blowing up the terminated spores and the terminated eggs. And I honestly don't have too many complaints with the grenade pistol. It's a great secondary option for utility based missions. I would pair this with some sort of machine gun though, like the Stalwart or the heavy machine gun, and then have your primary be either a shotgun or an assault rifle. You definitely don't want to make the same mistake I did where I paired this secondary with a primary explosive weapon something like the Eruptor or the Dominator, because if enemies get straight up in your face and you have a primary and a secondary weapon that does explosive damage, you're either going to get sworn by the enemy or you're going to accidentally blow yourself up in the process. But like I said, this is a great utility weapon. I don't really have any complaints. It does what it's designed to do, and it does a pretty good job of it and the GP31 grenade pistol has my seal of approval. And next up, let's talk about the G123 thermite grenade. Now, I had high hopes for this grenade, and maybe that's why I'm disappointed with it, but I'm disappointed with this. It's it's not that good, especially when you compare it to the other grenades, like the impact grenade or just the default grenade. It does so little damage. And based off of like watching the trailer and the description of it, it says it's a thermite grenade designed to adhere to surfaces before burning at 2,000 degrees Celsius, capable of burning through some armor. And it says it does 100 damage, it has 7 penetration, a radius of 2, and a fuse time of basically 3 seconds. And based off of the trailer gameplay, it looked like this was just going to be a sticky grenade that you, you know, stick it to the weak spots, and then it burns through the armor. Well, it just doesn't really work that good. I tried a number of different scenarios. I tried sticking it to Hulk. I tried sticking it to chargers, I tried sticking it to tanks, and the damage numbers is just so low. It basically takes every grenade you have, and then some, to kill one enemy. I just don't see the appeal of this grenade. I figured maybe throwing it into large groups would do some damage and get me a lot of kills, but basically everything I tried I was disappointed with. Now you can still use these grenades to blow up the factories or the bug holes, and you can use them to blow up terminated eggs, but honestly, in comparison to the other grenades, this grenade sucks in all those categories as well. Because it's a sticky grenade, it makes it really hard to get the grenade to fall directly into the factory holes. Same kind of goes for the bug nest. You kind of have to get really close to the bug nest and throw the grenade directly into the hole. Otherwise, if the grenade sticks to the surface of the hole, it's not going to blow it up. And yeah, I just wasn't that impressed with this grenade. I guess I was expecting this to just absolutely shred through weak spots on enemies. I was expecting to like hit a charger in the face and it would just burn through his face and kill it. Same goes for the robots. I figured if I'd hit a robot in the weak spot, it would, you know, do damage over time and just burn through its armor. But even if the grenade does kill your target, it's going to do it very slowly and over time. So the enemies are still going to be chasing you. They're still going to be shooting at you while it's burning them. So it has a very slow kill time. It's not good at taking out crowds. It's not good at taking out objectives. It's not good at damaging weak spots. I don't really know what this grenade is good at. And I had this grenade equipped all day with every loadout when I was testing every single weapon. This is the only grenade that I used because I really wanted to test it out in every scenario to see if maybe I was missing something. But after playing with it all day, my first impression is that this grenade sucks and I would rather use pretty much any other grenade when it comes to any scenario. Um, so based off my first impressions, I do not recommend the G123 Thermite grenade and hopefully we see it get some kind of buff in the future.
Which now brings me to the final weapon on this list, which is the final weapon that you can unlock in the War Bond, and it's the CB9 Exploding Crossbow. And this weapon has some pretty stiff competition considering it's also in the explosive category, same as the Eruptor. So this thing had to be pretty good for it to impress me. And honestly, at first, I wasn't impressed. I just got done using the Eruptor, and anything outside of the Eruptor just felt weak in comparison. So when I was using this crossbow, I was like, dang, this thing kind of sucks. You can't use it to blow up fences, you can't use it to blow up containers, so it has very little environmental impact. But to break down this weapon, it has no additional attachments, it has no flashlight, it has no different zoom variations of the scope, all you get is a red dot scope, which I do enjoy, I, I do really enjoy the scope on this weapon. It has only one firing mode, and it can fire five shots before it has to be reloaded. And it can be reloaded a total of 12 times, which gives you 60 total shots. And then for the stats, it does a crazy 420 damage, which is technically more than the Eruptor, even though it doesn't feel that way. It has a capacity of 5, like I previously said. It has a recoil of 35 and a fire rate of 50. And for its weapon trait, it does explosive damage. And when it came to the range test, I wanted to see how far you could shoot this before it dropped off. And it has a pretty crazy drop off to it at about 30 meters. Anything past 30 meters, you basically have to just aim up in the sky and arch your shots because the drop off is just crazy. You're going to see the most use out of this weapon in the 20 to 30 meter range. So like I said, I wasn't a big fan of this weapon at first, especially after using the Eruptor, but after using it for a couple hours, it really started to grow on me. And honestly, I really, really enjoy this crossbow. This is meant to be for crowd control. Think of the spray and pray shotgun, how it's designed to take out the smaller enemy types. That's kind of what this crossbow is designed to do. You just shoot it into crowds of enemies, try to aim at their feet, and it will do a bunch of explosive damage. And it can very easily and quickly take out a large group of enemies. Another thing I really like about this crossbow is that it can one-shot kill the robot scouts, the little mini ATRTs. It can just one-shot kill those, so that's great. And in all my testing, this is by far the number one weapon when it comes to blowing up the bug eggs. If you have a bug egg mission, forget the shotguns. This is the go-to weapon. It will just melt through the bug eggs in like two shots. So it's S tier when it comes to blowing up bug eggs. And in case you're wondering, it can't blow up the bug holes or the robot factory because, you know, that would be too good to be true and would be a little overpowered. And if you're going to be using the crossbow, I recommend the same thing that I did with the Eruptor, and it's to either bring a secondary with a high rate of fire or some sort of support stratagem like the heavy machine gun or the stalwarts, just something to give you a high rate of fire because if enemies get up in your face and you try to shoot them up close, you are going to blow yourself up. The explosive damage is insane with this thing and it can very easily kill you and your teammates if you're not careful. So I recommend if you use the crossbow, use it for anything that's, you know, about 30 meters, and then if anything gets up close to you, switch to something with a high rate of fire. I also found that the crossbow is really good at taking out dropship enemies. Instead of shooting the entire ship down with a rocket launcher or a quasar cannon or whatever, just shoot the underneath part with the crossbow and you can very easily wipe out the entire group of enemies in just one to two shots. And then when it comes to both factions, I found that the crossbow is honestly pretty good against both the Terminids and the Automatons. You know, obviously some weapons perform better against certain factions and I found that the crossbow works good against both factions. Now I won't claim that the crossbow is like god tier, but I do feel that it's an all around really good weapon. If I had to put it in like a tier list, just first impressions, I'd probably put it at like A tier. I don't really have too many complaints with it, and honestly I don't really want it to be buffed because I feel like it would be too overpowered at that point. Honestly, I just feel like it's in a good spot. But that does it for all of my first impressions of all the brand new weapons that were recently added in the latest War Bond. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. Let me know what your favorite new weapon is and if you guys have any tips and tricks for the new weapons or if I just completely overlook something then let me know down in the comments and I'll be sure to give it a heart so everyone else can see it. Now that is going to do it for me guys if you're new here please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications it's greatly appreciated. Consider giving this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and that's going to do it for me guys and I will talk to you all in the next video.